Good rainy afternoon, my beauties, and welcome to the 2024 Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, if you're familiar with my vlogs, you will know that I am a huge fan of the Epcot festivals. While food and wine might not be my favorite Epcot festival, it is a fan favorite among many, including this one. But yeah, like I said, it is a little bit rainy. Now, I'm sure you can probably hear it. It's more or less windy than it is rainy. But also, it's a very, very interesting first day of food and wine because the park is not busy at all. And because of this potential storm, more people are leaving than entering. Like as you can see, there is a good chunk of people leaving the park. But before we do anything, before we make our way into World Showcase, let's check out the merch. I will say though, am I expecting a huge merch drop? Not really, but I'm still excited about it. Coming down here, there's a whole bunch of figment merch. Oh, I see a spirit jersey. I like that. I need that. It's not figment. I know, it's a little figgy. Okay, that's really soft too. Ooh, actually the front has the ball on it. Yeah, ooh, yeah, you can kind of see it. Yeah, you know, maybe we shouldn't have got groceries for the house today. Yeah. And then of course we got our festival ears. Okay, these are really cute. These are really cute. Oh, and a bag. Lounge fly? No. <laughs> no more lounge flies. But look, it's got the. Thing I don't care. It. No more lounge flies. Ooh. It's also a food and wine t shirt. Ooh. Ooh, I love I that. I actually like that. So nice little colors. church mosaic. We are going to take a break because Allie's looking for something very wow. specific. This is, it's a rapatuity bag. It, it does say food and wine, so technically it's on theme. True. Ah. But how much is it? That's an expensive brand, so I assume it's expensive. There's no price tag. Oh, I guess that means it's Oh, there you go. $65. $60. For this? And there she goes, she has to find the perfect one. Y'all collectors know what this is, so relax. But also, we got another t-shirt right here. Ooh! <laughs> it's Chef Mickey. Disney is definitely getting much better at putting the main graphics on the backs yeah. of their t-shirts. Chef Rami! Okay, but what's on the back? No. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Look at this. Look at that. That's really it's a cute. Chef Mickey plush. That's adorable. He's got his food and wine apron on. Oh, that's adorable. Is that like a timer? Yeah. Oh my god. How cute is that? You know, that actually might be useful for right? our house. I may or may not have Look, we got some Muppet Lab stuff. Wait, what is this t shirt? Oh, that is cool. That's cool. Look at this a Muppet Lab's wine glass. Just for you. Well, because you drink wine, I don't. I do. Okay. Now, this is where it's at. Food and wine button up. So much purple on it, too. Oh no, not the Nike button up. What's on the back? Nothing? And then we have some of our more practical merch, i.e., kitchenware. Okay, this glass right here is cute. But again, I don't drink wine, so I really don't have any use for this. We do have a cute mug right here, and because I am getting into drinking lattes, okay? Lattes. Not straight coffee, but lattes. This might be useful. Food and wine t-shirt right here, too. Okay, this might be my favorite. Just a huge charcuterie board. That. that is cute. That's cute. Ooh, what's this one? Okay, I like the graphic that runs like throughout the, the shirt. Monochrome. Yeah, monochromatic. It's not bad. No, I just don't like the monochrome. I like the deep navy blue color. Aww. And we got a pass holder t-shirt. Aww. That's so cute. That's adorable. Oh, look, they're eating sushi. I love that. Ooh. See again, like the, what is it called? The mosaic theme? Yeah, got the ball. And little spaceship earth right there. Not Those the glasses. Those are cute. But the only issue is these things break easily. They do. And with the cat, yeah, I don't know how much I would trust that. Yeah. Look at this. If we could use these at work, oh, I would use, I would buy this. I would buy it. I would buy it right now. Not gonna lie, I didn't think I would be too impressed with this merch shop, but for day one, they have a lot. They are definitely listening to their fans in terms of the merch. Well, now that we're back outside, look what Allie got for us. Right. Which means food time. Life hack. If you don't want to spend a ton of money at food and wine, but spend a, a ton of money. Get a gift card, put like $50 on it. That's like six items from the festival. And then you don't have to worry about getting budgets. So basically, if you want to spend a lot of money without spending a lot of money, get the lanyard. Wow, and immediately walking into World Showcase, we have our first long line. But let's see, they got anything good? I mean... Okay, I've had the passion fruit cheesecake before. That's really that's good. Really good. This sounds interesting. Eel sauce? Have you ever had eel sauce? Uh, no. Basically like a sweet teriyaki sauce. It sounds barbaric. And then this is just um, seaweed flakes. Not gonna lie, the pork slider also sounds delicious. I've had this before. The pineapple chutney is okay, but the slider's really good. Yeah, I definitely want to check out the stand, but we'll come back later. And coming over to Simmering Sips, still have the guava cake. I had that last year. Not very good. Ooh, they got a lot of new mimosas though. 
tropical berry blood orange. Ooh. Blood orange is really good and the tropical is really good. That's from a couple years ago. After that blood orange margarita last week for my birthday, I think I'm down to try anything blood orange. I will say too, for opening day, World Showcase doesn't seem to be that bad, at least not at the entrance. I mean, sure, the lines are ungodly long, but in terms of the walkways themselves, they're actually not bad. Oh, there's a birdie. Better watch out, it's gonna get you. And then of course, a fan favorite, the Canada stand. Let's see, the filet mignon. I think I had that before, maybe in 2022. Cheddar cheese and bacon soup. Hmm. Yeah, Interesting. they have that at uh, Basilier. But also, are we about to try the filet from Canada? It's really good, it's life changing. Thank you. Oh boy, that thing's tiny. What? Not gonna give you a full size filet, give me a break. Well, looks like we're about to eat at a trash can. You know, true Epcot Festival style. <laughs> so yeah, my beauties, we got the filet mignon. Like I said, I've had this before, I just don't exactly remember when. It is very, very tiny, but at the same time, if you want the full filet mignon from Le Cellier, it's gonna run you like 40, 50 dollars, something like that. Still really good though. But in terms of its description, thankfully we got the festival passport. It's supposed to be filet mignon with mushrooms, garlic, and fine herb mashed potatoes. And garlic and fine herb butter. Lots of garlic and fine herb. Okay, now take two because we were able to find a table. Mushrooms good? Yeah. Don't know if I ever really mentioned it, but I actually really do like mushrooms. It takes an entire piece of mushroom. Very garlicky, very fine herbed. Is that the best way to describe it? Absolutely. Finely herbed. Finely herbed. Is that, is that my piece? Yes. Okay, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. That's not bad. Pretty good. Nice and medium rare. Just that bite alone, I'd probably give that a good 8 out of 10. I will say though, if you're really in the mood for a filet mignon, just go to Le Cellier and pay the $50 for it. What do you think? I mean, $9 versus $45 kind of says a lot. Compare the sizes between this and that one. But it's only you eating it. Exactly. But also presentation wise, actually looks really appetizing. Yeah, not gonna lie, this is a really, really good dish. Mmm. Oh, that second piece was where it was at. I'll bump it up to an 8.5 just from that piece alone. It's very melt in your mouth, too. You go for the last piece of mashed potato. Potato you land. It? You can have it. Here was what it was. <laughs> I love how you just cut it with a knife. Yep. But also, Allie being a really nice stand up gal and letting me have the last piece of mashed potato. What can I say? I'm generous that way. Oh. Oh wait, these mashed potatoes taste just like my grandparents' mashed potatoes. Is that a good thing or a bad yes. thing? Yes, oh, okay. that is a great, great thing. Yeah, once again, definitely a good first dish. Yes? Oh yes. But then as we start to make our way through the UK pavilion, no stand. What a shame. I mean, I figured we might be losing a stand or two, but this one? Why? I mean, don't get me wrong, sure, most people would rather just, you know, go in the pub and get a full-size drink, but come on. Ooh, but also, look at that sun starting to come out. See, no more rain. Yay! Then as we make our way into the France Pavilion, we'll find one of the busiest stands. And then, of course, you know, the food items that I cannot pronounce to save my life. Oh boy. That looks good. Okay, Allie's being impatient, just crack it. <laughs> Good grief. Okay, anyways, we got the creme brulee. Most of y'all should know what creme brulee is. I don't really eat creme brulee that often because I don't really know where I can get it. So yeah, this will be a first in a long time. Ooh, I put some mango in it too. If you don't know, I love mangoes. That is really, really good. I don't know if it's really practical on a hot day like this, but it's good. Nine out of 10 for this one. Do you want to guess why it's not getting a full 10? Because it's not big enough. Oh, maybe someone with three stomachs shouldn't be rating them. The amount of stomachs I have mean nothing. If it's good to me, it's good to me. I mean, is it good to you? I love mango too. So this is, and creme brulee is actually my favorite dessert of all time. So this is like my two favorite things right now. Yeah, this is a really, really good dish. Can you kind of see the bits of mango inside? I hope you guys can. Oh yeah. That is amazing. Well, so far, these first two dishes, amazing, outstanding. But here's the thing. Here's how this normally goes with the Epcot festivals. From the start to the end, the food quality will kind of go down a little bit. So obviously on the first day, they're gonna try and go all out with their food quality, make sure everything is up to everyone's standards, make sure everything tastes amazing. But that could potentially change later on in the season. Now, of course, this isn't gonna be our only day coming out to the festival. We will be coming throughout the season and I will be re-reviewing some of these items too to see how the quality changes. Right here we have the Brazil stand. We got a few items on here. Let's see. Ooh. 
Okay, those do sound good. But also price-wise, not too bad. And look, the Belgium stand is hidden all the way back here. These items look good. Belgian chilled coffee. And look at all the waffles that they got. Warm chocolate ganache and berry compote. Beer braised beef. Okay, that also sounds good. But we already had our fill of beef tonight. But why this stand is hidden in the back, I don't really know. I mean, there's a good line forming, but still, I don't know how I feel about that. And then if we come over to the Greece area. Ooh, spanakopita. I think I've had that before. Griddle cheese. Okay, these items look really, really good. What's that down there? Greek melon limeade. Wow, that sounds delicious. Oh boy, and of course, of course, the Japan stand. Let's see what they have over here. I can tell you right now, I am for sure getting the teriyaki chicken bun, but also these dishes just sound amazing. Out of all the stands, why doesn't this one have a line? That's kind of concerning. Ooh. Oh, whoa. Oh, look at this. Oh, well, Ali's getting dripped on. Oh, so I'm getting dripped on by something. Oh, whoa. Whoa. That looks so good. That's it amazing. Is. Good lord. Wagyu beef on rice with sushi, with seaweed and um, it's like Japan, Japanese like pickles basically. Well, my beauties, we both got something this time. So I got the teriyaki chicken bun. So it is going to be steamed bun filled with minced chicken, vegetables, and teriyaki sauce. It sounds very basic, but it looks good. I assume I just eat it with my hand like any civilized folk. Whoa. Whoa. This is my first bun ever, which I know is sad. I'm surprised you're not looking at me like, what? I'm really not surprised anymore. This is getting a 10 out of 10. This is good. But yeah, honestly, this is amazing. I, honestly, so far, Japan is definitely my favorite stand. And how's your beef? Really good. For all you haters out there, this is really thin, so I have to eat it with a fork. So don't come at me saying that I have to eat it with my hand. I was gonna say, aren't you supposed to like roll it up or something? You're then supposed eat it? to actually like do this with it, but it is so thin that it already fell apart. So we're not doing that. Yeah, so far, this is definitely my favorite item. Definitely be coming back for more. So once again, I'm going to be completely honest. For my first bao bun, not just my first bao bun, but my first Epcot Festival bao bun, absolute 10 out of 10 for that. Honestly, we'll see how many can we get in a season. Wanna <laughs> try, wanna shoot for 10? I would say 10. Yeah, that'll work. I mean, I do work at Epcot, so I could swing by and get one every other break. Then if we come over to the Flavors of America stand, we got a bunch of hot dogs. And I'm talking a bunch of hot dogs, but also there is a freshly baked chocolate pudding cake. So, you know, I mean, they have, I mean, they have something different. Okay, but what in the world is this beverage with alcohol? Brewery Homagang Farm Fresh Ale Conditioned on Wildflower Honey. Yeah, that's already way too much to say. What does that even mean? I have no, I have no idea. <laughs> At this point, it's alcohol, and I think that's all anyone cares about. So yeah, while I do love hot dogs, uh, this stand is going to be a hard pass. The famous Italy stand, and let's see what they, ooh, they got new items this time. Italian style nachos. Okay, uh, let's move on. <laughs> Polpettine Toscan, eh? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, listen, I might be Italian, but I can't speak Italian to save my life. Vanilla cheesecake, but isn't cheesecake already vanilla? Yes, but no. Okay, not gonna lie, this is probably the most aesthetically pleasing looking stand. The Spain stand. Let's see, what do we got over here? Oh, the Spanish charcuterie. I think that's what we were looking at earlier. Mm -hmm. It's good. Paila Negra. Okay, why does that look amazing? Now, here is my favorite festival stand, the Germany stand. Let's see what they got. Bratwurst on a pretzel roll. Yep, I'm getting that. Can we get that, please? Please, 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 please. Yes. please. Yeah. And yes, I know the line is decently long, but I don't care, because that bratwurst sounds amazing. But yeah, you can tell this is definitely going to be a very, very popular stand throughout the season. Thank oh you. boy, thank you so thank much. You so much. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest. This is the saddest looking bratwurst I've ever seen. Hush. Hush. We're keeping it PG today, okay? This doesn't really need any type of introduction. It's literally a bratwurst on a pretzel roll. Yeah, like I said, oh yeah, that pretzel roll is very, very firm. Uh, mm. Okay, the bratwurst itself, not half bad. Pretzel, a little too firm for my life. It's just, yeah, that bratwurst is way too small. So I would give this, I will give it like a 6.5 out of 10. It's good. It just needs to be made differently. The pretzel bun needs to be smaller and the bratwurst needs to be bigger. Will you cut it out, please? <laughs> I literally cannot take her anywhere with me. Also, the pretzel bun could use a little bit more salt. Even though the Germany stand is my favorite, that's more or less because of their desserts. Their regular food items, eh, they're just kind of mid. What do you think of the bratwurst, child? It's 
It's not bad. But. Again, the pretzel bread is dry, but also the grease coming off the bratwurst is like soaking into the bread, so it's making it like soggy. It is good. I've had better, I've had worse. And then over here, we have the Alps. Let's see what they got. Ooh, Swiss cheese, more Swiss cheese, dark chocolate fondue. Aw, I love Frozen. Uh, I will say though, the presentation of that fondue looks pretty good. Okay, look at this, the festival market, but oh my goodness, look, a kitty cat. That almost looks like Husker. That does almost look like Husk. <laughs> well, coming over to the refreshment outpost, okay. Impossible spicy sausage, not gonna lie, their impossible offerings are actually pretty good. Like I saw remember the Impossible Burger from 2020, 2021? That was amazing. Chocolate Amarula Mousse. Oh, it's a little dome cake. That's adorable. Whoa, what are these? Gulfstream Brewing Company Cloud 9 Watermelon Hibiscus Lager. Okay, but again, way, way too many words in these. Ooh, and then we got the India stand over here. What do we got? Potato and pea samosa. Okay, why did those look amazing? Whoa, chicken tikka masala. Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That I sounds can't have good. One, so you have fun with that. What a shame. I know. Well, you know what? For Allie's sake, we'll pass. You can get something. I'm no, it's fine. Talk. No one gets left out here. Aww. Then we have another festival fan favorite, the very, very long lined China stand. Let's see what they got. Ooh. Oh, that bao Crispy bun. Dog looks bao bun. That looks amazing. Oh my god. Will you be able to eat that? Yeah. Cool, then get it. Say please. Please. Would you will you please get the crispy duck bao bun? Shanghai scallion noodles. Those also look amazing. I kind of I want to try the dumplings though. Yes, it is long. Eh, we'll come back at we'll some point. Back. But then as World Showcase gets busier and busier and busier, we're gonna come across the Mexico stand. Another stand which I actually don't think I've ever gotten anything from. Let's see what the Mexico stand has. Ooh, oh, the tostada. Oh, that sounds good. Look at all that on there. Should we? I mean, can you eat these? I don't think so. Oh. Uh... Let's say this one you might be able to. Actually, yeah, this one I probably could. Okay. Do you want to try it? Yeah, why not? Okay. Okay, but also the line isn't that busy, which is again surprising because the Mexico stand is usually one of the most popular ones. But I will say too, even the margarita stand wasn't busy. So I don't even think it has to do with the festival. I just think it has to do with the fact that Epcot is just quiet today. But you know what that means? What? More food for us. Correct. And then right here, we have the noodle exchange. This is a bit of a newer stand established 2021 because, you know, everyone loves noodles. Send nudes. Nudes. I'm pretty sure that's Noodles and Company's motto. I think it is. Oh, that ramen looks amazing. Look at that. Thai shrimp with rice noodles, ramen with tofu. Yeah, that ramen with shaved beef. Take the other oh, peppers. Just kidding. Well, you thought those were carrots? I did. Oh, well, there's pickled carrots. Whoa. Maybe they what, took those off. What a shame. What a shame. But yeah, I will definitely be getting this next time. Oh, and here we have a stand that isn't even open yet. It doesn't even have a name. Unless this is a new stand? I don't really know. It's white and green, so maybe they're putting the Ireland stand here? Well, because remember, it's usually in the UK, so right. unless they're relocating it? I don't really know. Okay, now this is a dish that I'm excited about, the tostada. It's going to be tempura, battered shrimp, atop a fried corn tortilla with guacamole, cabbage, chipotle aioli, diced mango, and chile lime powder. It sounds like a lot. It looks like a lot, but oh my God, this looks amazing. First bite. How do I eat this? I don't know. You eat it, obviously. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, okay. Do I like this better than the bao bun from Japan? Ooh, do you? I don't know. Are you having this last piece of okay. shrimp or do I? I'll eat the tostada. You know what? I think I do. Wow. Just all the different spices in this definitely makes the dish. Yeah, this is also getting a 10 out of 10. But also while you're eating that tostada. You can have a bite. Mmm. Okay. That was good. Definitely a good dish. Definitely, definitely, again, getting a 10 out of 10. You see, like, I gotta think of at least three different things that I can get repeatedly. So this, I would say, is number two on the list. Yeah, here's the Australia booth in this very interesting looking tent. But aside from the fact that it's in a tent, this food also looks amazing. I've had this before. The lamb chop. It is amazing. I love lamb chops, but also that shrimp skewer, sweet and sour vegetables and coconut chili sauce. Oh yeah. Yep, this has my vote. And then the lamington yellow cake with raspberry filling with chocolate and coconut. But that's literally okay. just the tiniest little line of raspberry filling. Like, no, we want more. But again, it's the fact that it's just in this little tent. Like, it doesn't... 
I don't, I don't know. But yeah, that basically covers everything in World Showcase. But also the fact that we covered essentially everything in World Showcase. We did everything actually. We looked Almost at every everything. Single, yeah. We looked at every single thing. We didn't try every single thing. No. But, but. but also we put the chef. Then making our way down to World Nature, this whole area is dead. Which of course is because everyone would rather be in World Showcase. But also a lot of the more underrated stands are in Future World. You ever notice that? Yep. Oh, here's a brand new stand. Bramblewood Bites. Whoa. Grilled cinder brine pork tenderloin. Oh, grilled bison. I've actually never had bison before. Cast iron roasted Brussels sprouts and root vegetables. Okay, so next time I'll get the pork tenderloin and you get the Brussels sprouts mm -hmm. since you love Brussels sprouts and I love pork. Here. Oh yeah, check that out. They got the whole smoker thing going on. Honestly though, I would love to get a smoker, but they are very expensive. Are. At least if you want a good one. Yeah. Then coming over to milled and mulled, we got carrot cake. Okay, yeah, well I love carrot cake. Uh, this one can't eat carrot cake. Doesn't like me. What a shame. Borson fig and balsamic cheesecake. That sounds, that sounds interesting. Pear and almond. Frangipan pate brise. Hope I pronounced that correctly because that looks good. You know what? Pears, underrated fruit. Agreed. Okay, but also the alcoholic beverages, chocolate shop, chocolate red wine. Sounds interesting. Blake's Hard Cider Company Cider Mill Donut Hard Cider. Uh, okay. And then apple pie hard cider. Okay, uh, yeah. Pie okay, so cider. this, yeah, so we are coming to milled and malt first next time. And then right here, we got forest and field. Whoa, check out this menu. Autumn chili, bison, lamb, and pork belly. Good Lord, Damn. the whole trifecta over here. Pumpkin mascarpone ravioli. That sounds both sweet and savory, and I kind of want it. Burrata, seasonal fall fruits, spiced pecans, apple puree, and fig vinaigrette. Okay, but that presentation, that's like Gordon Ramsay level that presentation. That's Gordon Ramsay presentation right there. All Hallows Treat chocolate peanut butter imperial stout. Okay, so we're definitely sensing a like sweet theme here with the alcohol. Although I will say though, as long as it's not the PB&J wings. What? You don't remember those? Oh, wait. The, yes, yeah, don't. the PB&J wings. Yep. Honestly, this might end up being my favorite food and wine festival yet. And it's only day one. But now we get to experience what Communicore Hall is really for. So let's go in and check it out. Oh. Ooh, and that AC feels good. Check it out. They got a whole bunch of festival merch in here. Yeah, I will definitely be getting the Spirit jersey. It is cute. I just love the purple on it. But see, this is what Communicore Hall is supposed to be for. For presentations, for merch, for oh, food, all cheese. the good stuff. But then up there, you can see the mac and cheese stand at Macetizers. And checking out the menu, traditional mac and cheese, cheesesteak macaroni, truffle macaroni, impossible chili oh, cheese macaroni. Excuse me? I want to try the cheesesteak macaroni. Shaved beef, like peppers, this. onions, and breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs from a bag. Egg, tuppence. Let's see what kind of alcohol they got. Crooked Can Brewing Company, Vinifera Velvet Lager, Shine Summer Wheat Ale. Okay, oh, Raspberry Shine Summer Wheat Ale. That sounds good. Pumpkin Bourbon Barrel Ale. Well, I'm not a fan of bourbon. I just don't like dark liquor. Yeah, all this mac and cheese sounds amazing. And see, I love how we've already decided on what stands to immediately come to next time. That's how this works. And down here, we have the Earth Eats stand. This is another newer stand, but it's a bit of a classic. So let's see what we got. Red Wine Braised Beef short rib. I think I've had that before. Lemon poppy seed cake. Oh, I love poppy from Trolls. I will say though, it is very nice walking through World Celebration during a festival because no one cares to actually stick around. But also, no more figment. Huh? 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 No yeah. more figment. But let's be real, they will definitely, definitely be bringing that topiary back next year. And honestly, they better. And then coming down here, we have another new stand. Checking out the menu, the roasted warm water lobster tail. I think I've had the lobster tail before. Don't 100% remember jumbo shrimp cocktail. Oh, I love the really big shrimp from Drake and Josh. And then down here, we got another very, very smoky looking stand. Flavors from Faya. Like, yeah, you can see the smokers over there. Oh yeah, they're looking very, very smoky today, boys. Let's see what we got. The Steakhouse Blended Burger, the Impossible Burger Slider. Yeah, again, love the Impossible Burgers. Don't know why. Then the smoked corned beef. Ooh. They're so good. That looks very good. And then of course, you know, a classic modern stand, the Fry Basket, probably one of Ali's favorites. I mean, that right there. the Fry Flight. I mean, check it out. Sweet potato casserole fries, absolutely. But also $8 for a fry flight is not a bad price at all. No, considering one of them is five bucks. Uh-huh. But also most people wouldn't expect this yeah. to be a festival stand, but it actually is. Well, my beauties, we got one more stand to check out and probably one of the more controversial ones to come about recent times. It is the Brewing Lab at the office. 
And this is, of course, where they have all the wings. And yep, they're back. The peanut butter and jelly sticky wings. Yeah, not really a fan. However, the fried pickle spears, yeah, those are good. They brought back the pickle milkshake. If you guys remember, I had that last year. I liked it. Okay, but that was only because, you know, I could barely taste any of the pickle. I'm sure they changed the recipe, but part of me is like, yeah, they probably didn't. But then we're also looking at the frozen pomegranate and raspberry tea. I don't know what that is on top. Can't tell if those are like mobile balls or if that's just like a slushy. Actually, no, those might be dip. Kind of looks like it. Okay, so it says orange ice cream molecules. Um, never heard of ice cream molecules. I've heard of ice cream. Is there a difference? Okay, let's go in. Oh, you feel that AC? Heck yeah. Feel that AC? Beautiful. Oh, and look, they actually opened up the hall. So it's not just a DVC lounge anymore. Yeah, literally my favorite thing about the Odyssey is that there is lots of space. But I'm also curious as to what they got going on here. Like, I don't really think this is supposed to be a show space. I think this is just here. I mean, it would be cool if Bunsen and Beaker came out. That'd be cute. Well, remember they were here in 2017, I think? They were. Oh, there's something going on on the TV. <laughs> But you know what? I think we're gonna try that frozen pomegranate and raspberry tea because it actually sounds pretty good. Yep. Thank you. Whoa, look at that. It's literally dipping nuts. Yeah, but look at the cute little souvenir cup. I know. Okay, this is actually pretty decently weighted too. Oh, it is. So yeah, like I said a minute ago, we got the frozen pomegranate and raspberry tea. I love both pomegranates and raspberries, so I know I'm gonna love this. But also, Allie got very lucky and Not found shame. a seat. Yeah, <laughs> she's very happy. I am very happy. Okay, uh, first sip. Please be refreshing. Oh, that's really good. That is really good. Okay, yep. Immediate 10 out of 10. Whoa, that's really good. That is. It's really sweet, though, so if you don't like sweet things. Very refreshing. That is really good. There Trying to go. push the Dippin' Dots down? Yeah, yeah there's maybe. A, there's a few in there now. Kind of. Paper straw is now clogged. Nice job. That could be a good thumbnail. You you trying to get the Dippin' Dots out of the straw? But yeah, this is really, really good. Definitely one of Epcot's most refreshing drinks. Yeah, um, Disney, please make this a regular release item. This was definitely, I would say my favorite item of today. Even though it's a drink, like it's really good. Super, super refreshing. Oh, I got a brain freeze. No, no, those orange things are sour. And I was not expecting that. Yeah, we've had to resort to eating with a spoon. Yeah, because the, you know, the paper straw didn't really check. Oh, you guys remember the cucumber watermelon slushy from Flower Garden? I don't really know what's better. They're both amazing. You really think so? Uh, you know what? Just for the sake of me, I'm gonna give them a tie. For I think if they bring that back for next year's Flower Garden, as well as this for next year's food and wine, then I'll give a more definite answer. Also, you wanna know how this is my favorite item? Because I've filmed this the most. Think about that. Have you? Yes, I have. <laughs> I probably filmed at least like 15 to 20 clips of this. Thing. <laughs> yeah, it is that good. So at the end of the day, normally I'm not really the biggest fan of the Odyssey Festival stands, but this year, yeah, they definitely have it down. Just except for the PB and J wings. Like, yeah, we, we don't I talk about those. Sound appealing. I don't even know why you ate those. But now, my beauties, we get to finish off our day walking through the beautiful world celebration all the way down to the exit. But also, we actually did a lot today. Really fit. Like, in the four hours that we were here, we actually did a good amount of stuff. I mean, I'll say it, I feel accomplished. And plus, we even went under budget today. So we still have like $12 left on that thing. Heck yeah. Well, my beauties, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this first day of food and wine. I hope you guys enjoyed because we certainly enjoyed this one. Oh, we had a blast. We did everything. Yeah, like, I did not expect us to do all that we did. Because normally when I cover the Epcot festivals, yeah, I do maybe like two, three things, then call it a day. But no, today we basically covered everything. But like I said earlier, don't you worry because we will be coming back for more. Now, as always, my beauties, we do this every single week. So make sure you like, subscribe, share, and ring that bell. Take care of yourselves, and we will see y'all next time.